Go. Okay, so I'm going to try to do apparently what we're not supposed to do, which is talk about candidate genes and a little bit on HPA axis. <laughs> so I'm going to try to, and thank you, Brandon, for setting some of this up. What I'm going to try to do to me is like really take like a systems level perspective of connect genes. I'm just picking one. Uh, to some of these potential intermediate phenotypes. I'm not going to say into phenotypes because you'll get in trouble there. Um, but stress, physiology, attention, emotion, as these are potential indicators of negative valence. I'm going to do this in youth. So just to start, this is our gene environment mood study. There's a lot going on here. Just want to say a little bit, two-site study, general community sample, um, third, sixth, ninth graders, accelerated longitudinal cohort design. You can see that kind of at the bottom. And we did a lot of measurement here. Um, some genetics information processing, cortisol to lab challenge. We did observation, lots of stuff, and followed these kids now actually longer than three years. So let me get to the actual finding. Well, you all probably know this, but I want to set a little bit up here of the serotonin transporter gene. And the real thing I want to get across is it converts reactivity to environmental context. And these are findings that you've seen in other places, but these are from our lab. So we measured stressful life events every three months, and these are data over one year. And these are ideographically defined stressors, as in when you look at changes in stress over time. So not from the sample as a whole, but when a kid has more stress compared to his own usual self over time. That is interacting with the, ser the short version of the serotonin transporter gene to confer more depressive symptoms. One example of reactivity to environment. These same kind of thing, depressive symptoms in mom. So this is kid serotonin transporter gene. When mom has higher depressive symptoms over time, the kid's more reactive to that when they carry the short allele. Different environmental context. And here's, um, it's actually three studies. So you do get replication in gene environment interactions. This is parenting. We did it with observations of parenting, parent report of parenting, kid report of parenting. And basically what you see is the kids who carry the short, short allele, they're more reactive to their parents in both good and bad ways. This is differential susceptibility. So basically, the kids are getting really good environments. They show more positive emotion. And if you have poor parenting, these kids show less positive emotion. My point here is this is about reactivity to the environment. So given all of that, we have multiple replications, different contexts. How might this be happening? What might be some mechanisms? So picked basically two RDoC-informed negative valence systems that I want to show some data on that we've been interested in. One is attention to negative emotional stimuli. The second is physio physiological stress reactivity. So this is a dot probe task, standard stuff that you've seen before. And what I'm showing you here is, I can't see because there's a tree there. Um, the blue line are the SS kids. Um, and this is basically how much they're attending to negative emotion. And when these kids are experiencing high levels of stress, they attend more to negative emotion. So this is beginning to suggest these SS kids are highly reactive to their environment and they attend to negative emotional stimuli in their environment. We also have eye tracking data. This is done three years later, different method, different time, and this is basically a passive viewing task. And what you see here is that the SS genotype, they're attending more to sad faces. Number of fixation, fixation duration, different method, different time point, very similar result. These SS kids are attending more to negative emotion. And then this is my student, Jess Janess, her dissertation work. She's a fabulous student. We're supposed to be promoting our students. She's on internship now at UW, and she's going to have a fantastic postdoc mentor. And when she's all done, somebody should hire her. She's a killer. OK. <laughs> so what we did, and I just wanted to give a quick shout out to Brandon. He's right. Um, what's really interesting here is the standard literature says that if you're clinically depressed, you're going to attend to negative emotions. These were kids who avoided a negative emotion and had the SS genotype, they're more likely to become depressed 18 months later. So I think what's happening here is interesting. You need to consider risk um, and future prediction here within a genetic context. And what we think might be happening is these kids don't want to see negative emotion. And they're not processing. They're not elaborating on it. So they don't have that kind of experience in an exposure base. And that sets them up more for predicting later um, prediction of depression, especially when they're more reactive to their environment. So the second thing is HPA axis. Um, what I want to talk about here, and the point really quickly, is we've done a developmentally appropriate um, trier social stress test with our kids. I won't tell you the details. I don't have time for it. 
but we've done it at two time points. We did it at baseline when these kids were in the lab, 18 months later when they're in the lab. Both times I just want to point out, we do get your standard stress response. We have to, we basically go get saliva samples literally as the kids come out the door. Um, because showing up to a lab is an uncertain, novel, stressful context. We have high cortisol levels, as you'd expect, as they show up, right? We give them a while, relax, the court comes down. We do this trier social stress test, court goes up. So this is a standard profile. This isn't very interesting. Um, what we find interesting is what is the stability of those court profiles over time as a function of genotype? And basically all I want you to see is those are test retest correlations for the different genotype groups. So area under curve ground, initial area under curve increment, lab entry, blah, blah, blah. The point here is that the stressful point coming into the lab, the challenge, so really higher, significantly higher um, stability for the SS, SL genotype. And this we think might be one of the ways that that genotype is conferring um, risk and um, reactivity to the environment. So six minutes, this is just a quick summary. Serotonin transporters converting reactivity to the environment. How might that be happening? It's linked to negative valence systems at that intermediate level of processes. And this, to me, and I think this is honestly the idea, some of the idea behind the RDOC is a coherent system. You should see some coherence across different levels of analysis. And that's what I'm trying to say is from genetics to these intermediate phenotypes of attention, stress, physiology, and then to behavior, you do see some coherence across these systems. Thank you for your attention.